uh, you have done the prototype, something called as bring up. So what happens is after the prototype stage, since it has, you have given your design to the factory. Now the factory will send you the hardware. So at this stage, so this stage from this stage onwards, you have the hardware in your hand. You are sitting in the lab. So imagine that till this time you are till all the stages up to this stage, you know, till the last stage, like let's say prototype stage, you may be sitting in, in front of your laptop. Uh, you are doing something on a computer, you know, drawing something, doing more simulations, sending the data and all that. But post this stage, post the bring up stage, you are actually sitting in a lab because you have the hardware in front of you. So once you get the hardware, there is something called as bring up that you do. So what do you, what do you do once you get the hardware? So these are some basic steps. So first thing that you do, once you get your hardware, you should also do a visual inspection of defects. So it's, it's very difficult to, you know, believe, make someone believe saying that this is a complex electrical design. What can I know by just visually looking at it? Okay. So somebody may say, this is a complex design. What will I know by physically looking at it? Actually, you'll be very much surprised that whenever you get a hardware from the factory, many times you can say, see that some of the components might be damaged and you'll be also surprised to see that. So I'll show you here. So if you see this chip, there is a particular orientation of placing this chip. Many times there is an error in placing this chip and they might have placed it in ULTA or reverse order. So imagine that your ship, you know, this chip has to be sitting in this particular orientation. Imagine that it is tilted by 90 degrees or by 180 degrees, then it won't work, right? Your circuit won't work. You're shorting maybe power to ground input has become output. I don't know what all, what all changes would have happened. So these are some common mistakes, uh, which the factory may do. You may, you may not be aware of that, right? Without looking at that, if you directly connect it to your power supply, you will just blow up the board. And like how I told you, it's a costly mistake. If you don't detect it early, it's a costly mistake. You have just lost your hardware. You might have spent thousands of dollars in building this hardware. You have lost all your time and money because you blew up the hardware. Okay. So visual inspection is very critical. So the next stage. So once you have checked that, ensure that, okay, there are no, visually I can't see anything, any issue. Next is to check the power supply. As you know, that power supply is a critical thing. So power supply mistakes can actually damage the components on the board. So that's why you have to be very careful with the power supply. You're not only checking just from one port, like the input part is not only, you're not looking only at the input uh, uh, point where the power enters the board. You also need to be checking at every point on the board, where the power is going. So there are a lot of components, you know, uh, which require power. So you need to be checking at, you know, all these ICs, IC points, or some critical blocks to see that whether you're getting the right power supply, because what happens is your input may be five volts, but at this stage for this IC, it may not require five volts. Maybe it is, it requires only 3.3 volts. So you need to check whether it is actually getting 3.3 volts or is it getting five volts? So what happens is if the five volts goes directly to the chip, it may damage the chip because it is more than its rated voltage. So that's why it's important to check the power supply. Next is power sequencing. So what happens is when you turn on the hardware, um, there is, there is a sequence of turning on and turning off the devices. So typically in a complex system or an embedded system like this, you, when you supply the power, all the components do not turn on or off at the same time. So there is an order of which should turn on first, which should turn on next and which should be turned off also in the reverse way you know, which should be turned off first and one by one you do that. Okay. This is called as power sequencing. Again, during your architecture design, you would have come up with a power sequencing uh, flow and you should ensure that this is what is actually happening here. Okay. You check the power sequence. Then your chip already has some code or you load some code, you know, BIOS or something, which, which detects your system and says that, okay, uh, okay, this is an interface. It is working fine and all that. So that you do next. This is a basic code. You're not loading your complete software. This is some basic code that you load into your system. Then the other critical thing is clocks. So imagine that different blocks in a system, if they have to work, they have to work in a clock 
uh, in a proper clocked fashion. That means there is a sequence or an organized way of uh, making things work. You don't want everything to work at the same time. Some things have to work now. Some things have to work at a little later stage. Maybe some some systems require some delay to be given. Okay, all this has to be considered, and for that you need to check whether the clocks are proper. Okay, so there is a sequence of running your uh, system. Some sometimes some systems run in parallel. Some systems run one after the other. Some systems require some delay. Certain few milliseconds of delay it has to run after that. So ensuring that your clock is proper, all those things will run as per the design. Okay, important point is during the bring up, you work with all the subsystems for the bring up. So as I told you before in the architecture, you have worked with, you have various subsystems in your system. So it's not a one person job or a one team job. You have a lot of uh, people from different subsystems who join your team and say that, okay, we will sit together in the lab and we'll do the bring up one by one, okay, of the subsystem. All these things have to be discussed during the system architecture design. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button below to get regular updates of video releases.